Rate cuts have begun. September seasonality has already reared its ugly head, and I want you to be prepared for when we get another opportunity. As such, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about three stocks to look at doubling up your position on right now. All three of these companies have great upside potential over the long term. All three of these companies pay growing dividends, and all three of these companies trade at an intriguing valuations. Before we unveil what three stocks we're talking about, do me a huge favor. Show your appreciation by clicking that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel, and let's jump into it. Hey everyone, Mark Rusin here, back for another video. As always, I'm a CPA and not a financial advisor, so please do not take this as financial advice. And before we begin, let me thank today's video sponsor, which is The Motley Fool. The Motley Fool has a ton of great resources and products available for investors of all different levels. And right now, you could sign up for free and get their 10 best stocks to buy right now by going to fool.com forward slash mark. You can also check out the link down in the description below. All right, let's jump back into today's video, taking a look at three stocks to consider doubling your position in. Beginning with stock number one, which is gonna be Broadcom. Stock ticker AVGO. Broadcom is an AI-related company, but they're much more. Although AI is a big component of the growth story moving forward, they are also involved in automotive, which is a fast-growing segment for the business, although it's still quite small, but growing at a fast rate of speed. Broadcom currently trades at a market cap of $755 billion, and over the past 12 months, shares of AVGO are up an impressive 90%. The growth over the past 12 months has been phenomenal, and not something I could come to expect over the next 12 months. But there's actually a stock that can go neck and neck in terms of that performance still on this list to come. But when it comes to Broadcom, as I mentioned, they've been firing on all cylinders, not only with the stock performance, but with, with their financial performance as well. Taking a look here, you can see that revenues have increased from $27.45 billion in FY21 to now $46.8 billion over the trailing 12 months. Operating income has increased from $8.7 billion to $14.3 billion, and operating margin has remained relatively flat from 31.6% in 2021 to 30.6% over the trailing 12 months. Still very high margins. In terms of free cash flow, this company has increased their free cash flow from $13.3 billion a few years back to now generating nearly $19 billion over the trailing 12 months. Free cash flow is so important because this is really how companies get things done. This is how they keep debt in check. This is how they pay dividends and make strategic acquisitions. Speaking of that dividend, let's take a closer look at that right now. As you can see here, the company pays an annual dividend of $2.12 per share, which equates to a dividend yield of 1.3%. This is a company that a handful of years back had a dividend yield north of 4%. But due to the strong growth in the share price, that yield has plummeted. After all, the dividend yield has an inverse relationship to the stock price. The company has been growing their dividend for 13 consecutive years, and they have a very strong five-year dividend growth rate of 16%. Now let's take a look at valuation, where we can see analysts are expecting the company to generate 2025 EPS of $6.18 per share, which equates to a forward PE multiple of 26.2 times. And looking out over the next few years, analysts are expecting average annual growth of 22% per year. That gives the company a peg ratio of 1.19. And when it comes to peg ratios, I'm looking for companies to have peg ratios below 1.5. Right now, there are nearly 30 analysts covering the stock. And when you average all of their 12-month price targets up, you get a stock price of nearly $199 per share, which implies 23% upside from current levels. That is pretty juicy. It's no 88%, but we can't come to expect that. And that brings us to dividend stock number two, which is Taiwan Semi, stock ticker TSM. We've gone from one AI and chip company to another with TSM. And when it comes to AI, I'm a still a big believer in AI and still believe that we are in the early innings, but there's so much more to AI than just chips. That's just one piece of the whole pie. There's also infrastructure. There's also equipment makers. There's also the software component, energy, data centers, and the list goes on. 
When it comes to Taiwan Semi, they have a market cap of $867 billion. And over the past 12 months, I told you there was a stock that's going to be able to go neck and neck with Broadcom. It's Taiwan Semi, who has increased their share price by 88% over the past year. Taiwan Semi is another company with plenty of growth moving forward. But looking back at their financial results, this is a company that has been growing quite strong. Taking a look here, you can see that revenues have increased from $57.2 billion in 2021 to $75 billion over the trailing 12 months. Operating income has increased from $23.4 billion to $31.5 billion today, and operating margins have increased slightly to 42% over the trailing 12 months, coming from 41% back in 2021. In terms of free cash flow, this company has increased their free cash flow from $9.8 billion just a few years back to now generating $22.1 billion today, increasing more than 120% over that period of time. You have heard me say it before, free cash flow is what makes the dividend grow. But even if you're not looking at a dividend-focused company, free cash flow is what makes a company grow. But speaking of the dividend, let's take a closer look at that now. As you can see here, the company pays an annual dividend of $2.19 per share, which equates to a dividend yield of 1.3%. They also have a payout ratio, very low at 8%, and a five-year dividend growth rate of roughly 6.5%. Now turning our attention to valuation, where analysts are expecting the company to generate 2025 EPS of $8.17 per share, which equates to a forward PE multiple of 20.4 times, making them even cheaper than Broadcom. And this compares very favorably to their five-year average of 25.2 times. Looking out over the next few years, analysts are expecting average annual growth of 24% per year, giving this company a very intriguing peg ratio of 0.85. And when we take a look at analyst expectations, they too see the upside in the stock. As we can see that analysts have an average 12-month price target of $218 per share, implying 30% upside from current levels. And that leads us to dividend stock number three, which is LAM Research, stock ticker LRCX. Why not keep the AI theme rolling? We touched on a chip company. We've touched on a foundry company. Now let's turn our attention to a equipment manufacturer. When you look at all of these chip companies across the board right now, demand is not the issue. When you look at Nvidia, demand is not the issue. AMD, even TSM, which is a foundry company, demand is not the issue. It's the capacity and that falls right into the hands of a company like LRCX. LAM Research currently has a market cap of $755 billion, and over the past 12 months, they are up nearly 20%. When you look at LAM Research, some of their largest companies include Taiwan Semi, which we just took a look at, Samsung, and also Intel, who's trying to build out its own foundry business. When you're taking a closer look at LAM Research, you got to know that they are going to trade pretty much in lockstep with how the sector as a whole has been doing. And with all of this AI boom and all the chip companies increasing their production, LAM Research saw a huge blow up in terms of the pandemic timing. And now we have started to see things settle out, but we are now seeing more consistent revenue growth moving forward. Taking a look at the financials, we could see that revenue did blow up during the pandemic, surpassing $17 billion back in FY22, but have since leveled out to roughly $15 billion over the trailing 12 months. Operating income came in at $5.4 billion in FY22, and today sits closer to $4.3 billion. Operating margin has slightly fell from 31.2% in FY22 to 28.7% over the trailing 12 months, but still a very strong margin nonetheless. So again, as you could see in these results, the company saw a huge spike during the pandemic, but things have settled down. But this does not discount the growth moving forward. But even with those things settling down, one of the most impressive things that you can see when looking into LAM research is although revenues are down, although operating income is down, when you take a closer look at free cash flow, which is one of the most important metrics that I personally look at when analyzing a company, you will see that their free cash flow actually grew. This means that for every dollar of revenue that this company generates, more and more of it is being turned into free cash flow as it trickles down throughout the company. 
Taking a look here, you can see that free cash flow was $2.55 billion back in FY 2022. And today, that number is sitting at $4.3 billion. Love to see that continued growth, as I believe it is even more important than top line growth. Now let's take a closer look at the dividend, where you can see the company pays an annual dividend of $8 flat, which equates to a dividend yield of 1.2% and the company has been growing its dividend for nine consecutive years and counting, and they have a strong five-year dividend growth rate of 13.5%. Turning our attention now to valuation, where we can see that analysts expect 2025 earnings to come in at $35.71 per share, which equates to a forward PE multiple of 21.2 times, pretty much in line with their five-year average, but below their three-year average of 23 times. Analysts are expecting the company to grow earnings at an annual rate of roughly 24% over the next few years, giving them a peg ratio of 0.9. And when we take a look at analysts' expectations, they are very high on this particular stock, with an average 12-month price target of $1,086 per share, implying an impressive 44% upside from current levels, the highest by a long shot of all three stocks on our list today. So there we looked at three companies with huge growth potential moving forward. All three happen to be in the AI industry to a degree. Let me know down in the comment section, which of these three companies are you most bullish on moving forward? And which of these three companies do you already own within your portfolio? I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't done so, please show your appreciation. Click that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.